How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. It is Monday, time for another upload. Now today, just be wary. We are just really deep diving into an ambitious venture into disc golf science as we knew it before. Today we will be testing the disc golf community norms when it comes to practice rounds that we've all been following like robots for years and years and years. If you've been around this game long enough, I'm sure you've had somebody tell you at some point about playing a putter only disc golf round. Usually the purpose of this encouragement is to get you to A, learn how to throw your form better by just simplifying it and using one disc, or B, learn how to manage a course better by simplifying it and using one disc. But when they tell you to play this one disc round, they always say putter. And putters are boring. Personally, I couldn't see myself doing an entire video just using putters. So I asked myself the question, I thought to myself, I pondered if you will, why are we always doing these putter only rounds? I've even seen mid range only rounds sometimes. And why don't we get out the 13 speeds? So today my thesis is driver only rounds are the new thing. What I've done here is I've brought myself out to Independence Park, arguably the most challenging course in this area, probably second to New London, but more trees here for certain. I've got three 13 speed drivers. Well, either 12 or 13. I've got two Raiders, and a hypercane. The idea here is overstable, middle stability, understable. Because here's the thing, the idea behind a putter only round, a lot of times, at least on the course management side of things, is you're learning to play the safe shots, lay up a little more, and see what that does for your game. But here's the thing, sometimes you gotta throw aggressive shots in this game. So the idea behind my round, the driver only round, my patented driver only round here, is you gotta play aggressive the whole way through. We're practicing the aggressive shots. You got speed in your hand. So I'm gonna loop this course and we're just going pedal to the metal. The goal here is to prove once and for all that driver only rounds are superior and certainly not a bad idea. Um, I'm starting out on what I believe is hole 12 now at Independence Park. Uh, I'll probably play through 18 and then maybe loop on like holes one and two. We'll, we'll just see how things work. But the goal here is to try and stay as close to par as possible. Cause yeah, I don't have my putters and approach disc. So I might be at a tiny disadvantage when it comes to within a hundred feet of the basket. But let's be honest, I'm not exactly uh, an ace with the putter anyway. So it probably won't matter. We're just gonna be ripping shots out here and we're gonna see just how well we can score. Because here's one thing I do know is that drivers go further than putters. Can't argue with that. All right, so our first hole, hole 12 here, par four. We gotta get down to the bottom of that hill. It goes directly right. There's a little bit of OB once you go right and it's kind of like a surrounded green situation. Now, normally from this tee, I might just try and throw a min range and just throw it to the bottom of the hill, but it's not the point of this round, okay? This round, I'm trying to throw a forehand further than I've ever thrown a forehand in my life and get around the corner. But it forces me to try, you know? Maybe I'm gonna realize something. Maybe I have a 400 foot forehand. It's been there all along. Did I warm up? No. Oh my gosh. Ow. Ow. This is my flippiest Raider. Just keep that in mind when it doesn't flip over. Oh, I did flip it over. Drivers only. They kick right back into the fairway every time. Hey, you know, disc golf can be so fluky sometimes, you might as well just throw it as hard as you can and wait to kick back into the fairway. Now we're in perfect position to hit it around the corner. We've got our middle stability Raider here. Perfect. I was actually quite good. Forehand might be alive today. <sighs> Absolutely perfect setup shot. And here's the thing, people. Some, some would argue that the putter only rounds are helping you practice your touch. You need a lot of touch. Well, I would argue that throwing drivers from 100 feet out, 13 speeds, mind you, that's the real way to practice touch because you got it. And here's the thing as well. If you're going to throw a bad shot, it's a bad shot. You know, the driver just gets you there faster and that's efficiency. Jump putt with a 13 speed. You got to have this shot in your bag if you ever want to make it on tour. Trust me. I mean, it's just, here's the problem, folks, is I'm gonna buy into this without trying. I mean, that's just the easiest part you'll ever take on that hole. It's not an easy hole per se. I mean, we're just, we might shoot a course record. All right, on the hole 13, we're rocking. Got a part to start today. This hole is 370 feet, I think. Just gotta rip a forehand through that gap. I haven't played this long tee in a while. This is a pump. 
I don't know if I can get there, but today I can. Drivers only. Did I pull it left? Yes. Does my beveled edge driver technology cut through the trees better than a putter? Also yes. So that might have gone pretty far. There's a chip up and down from here. Not really a big, not really a big deal at all right here. Maybe I'll throw it in. Twenty feet for our par. The par train is the goal here. We're gonna make some birdies too, maybe. Let me know if y'all have ever experienced this effect, but for me, whenever I throw a putt with a driver, and that's not often, I like become such an amazing putter because it's so unfamiliar that my body like kicks out all the bad habits and I just rely on muscle memory. When you're holding a putter, you're like, I'm supposed to be doing this. It has had me contemplating whether I should putt with the driver before, but I know if I did it too much, I'd ruin the magic. So that's just where we're at. All right, a little change of pace here. I could lie and say I'm not a little scared, but I am a little scared. It's 420 feet down the hallway to the basket. That's so far, I can't even see it. It's too early. Highs or flip, baby. What could go wrong? Backhand, highs or flip. Drivers only, baby. Only one speed, fast. Here we go. Oh, watch this though. Look, at drivers always kick to the middle. Whoa, that was lucky. So far today, 100% of my bad shots have kicked right back to the middle of the fairway. Write that down in your scientific journal. Forehand approach. I mean, if we can make three straight pars, be on cloud nine right now. This is gonna be difficult. If you were a putter thrower. I might be on one. Sit. Oh. I mean, it just, it just hit a rock and stopped right next to the basket. There's something, something going on in this course. Something very special going on in this course. I might have to stop talking about it. It's like a no hitter in baseball. Just gotta stop talking about the breaks I'm getting because just gotta let the footage do the work. All right, we got a, we got a pickle here. Let me explain this. Okay, this gap right here is about the width of a disc. This gap right here, gonna need the bank shot. This gap over here, gonna need a bank shot of astronomical proportions. So, a couple of options. Could try and play the bank shot. Things have kind of been shaping up that way. Could try and just throw it tomahawk style, straight through that middle gap. I kind of like that. I kind of like to just swoosh it right through there, make the gap big. I don't even know why the tree felt the need to be that loud. That was not that hard of a throw. Okay, I think we're fine from here. Disappointed to say the least that we lost the par streak there. Pretty close to the basket. Some would say bad course design. Uh, I wouldn't say that, some would say it. Gonna need a birdie now. Okay, hole 15 is alleging 240 feet. It's just not misplaced the T sign or something because this hole is at least 300. I've never played from this back tee because this hole is kind of newish, but I think I have to hyzer flip it through that right gap. I mean, this is a perfect example of, I would never be throwing a 13 speed here, but like today it's gonna work out. It's gonna all work out. Just gonna throw it fast, throw it fast, leave your worries in the past. That's the motto of this video. Look at that. Beat the trees. It beat the trees. Oh my gosh. I can't tell if I got far enough, but that's not that's not too bad. See, I kind of short armed that and had I thrown the normal disc I would throw in that hole, probably wouldn't have got this close. But here I am, 35 feet. Easiest thing ever. For birdie, are you kidding me? Back to even par. Haters would hate that. Should have thrown my straighter 13 speed. So that comes down to too lazy. Yep, should have thrown the straighter one. Yep, no problem. Just another par. We're just making pars. You know, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with par. Ever. Never, ever, ever. Okay, you can see the T sign in frame there, but we're playing a 560 foot par four. Probably the hardest hole we'll play yet in this video and for the remainder of the video. So if we can get out of this one alive, we're in great shape because that gap is terrible. And honestly, I would normally punch this through with something slower, but today I'm going to blow up the gap with a 13 speed, just blow it up. The shot is gonna be so low, you might see sparks come off the ground. Oh, I hit it, turn. Tree hit, straight to the middle of the fairway. That's how we roll. So I landed my shot just in front of the short tee. Um, oh, there's a dog coming right now, this dog, 
like lives on this property or like right next to it always comes to follow you from this hole on because it goes to play in the water. It's the best thing ever. Just give it a second and it'll, it'll be here. Let me know how you feel about the short long T thing. Cause like some courses you feel like from the long tees, the short T ends up being like where a good shot from the long T would land. And then some courses it's like, oh, the short T is just, you know, a hundred feet closer. I don't know if you can see this dog in frame, but it's precious. Might have diseases, but you know, it's a good dog. Um, all right, forehand, get us near the basket. Dude, I'm, okay, that was nose up. Let's not get excited. I'm not gonna talk about it. Not gonna talk about the kicks, but they are really good. But I wouldn't say that. This is the dog I was talking about in case it looked like I was petting a ghost. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, puppy. Okay, this is gonna be a very slippery approach. Need this thing to really stay close to the basket here, but we could get up and down for par and that would be an accomplishment. fade just reliable over stability when you need it that's a neat tap in for par this dog better follow me as if you thought the nature was over for this video i almost trampled this turtle so he almost took a size 12 straight to the shell just another tap in par here on a scale from i'm a little bit excited about this to i might take all the putters out of my bag somewhere in the middle right now somewhere in the middle because one over through these holes is pretty decent for me. Oh, the dog is on its way. We are in business. Most loyal pet of all time. I wish I knew his name. Look at the majestic beast. Okay, this is where things get a little scary. Got 340 feet to the pin. We've got to cross a bit of water. I'm not scared, but some probably would be scared here. Hypercane, I haven't really thrown the Hypercane. This is my overstable one. I find that when you're forced to throw drivers in the woods, you tend to go more understable, but we gotta flex this one. From the other side? Yeah, I should film this from the other side. I'm almost positive you could hear my brain like buffering just then. The dog is on the tee pad. I repeat, the dog is on the tee pad. Okay, we're good. Wait, there's a pro tee. I'm on the short tee right now. It's gonna be harder than this. I absolutely completely forgot there was a pro tee on this hole and this shot is so scary. I've gotta just rip it out there, get it around that bush miss the dog on the tee pad and get it to go right watch out buddy but trevor cook what is up everybody welcome into trevor's disc fishing channel super excited for this new video today we're gonna be fishing out a hypercane out of the swamp in the everglades of florida i've got a really big pole made out of wood custom made oh dude, what's your uh disc fishing techniques guys this one's floating so i feel like if i get under it which this thing weighs a thousand pounds. Here we go. Just lift it and drop. No, no, don't sink, don't sink. Oh my gosh, I sunk it. Oh my gosh, we are in a very bad situation. I got it, I got it. That was a key swipe right there. If you drag it under that loose sediment, she's a goner. Sometimes you gotta wait a little bit for the sediment to settle. That's why they call it sediment. Oh, I, I definitely hit it. We definitely made contact. Oh, there she is. Come here now. What am I touching right now? Poop? How did I choke that? Whereabouts currently unknown right now. I need polarized glasses. I mean, now we're, now we're in, we switch strategies now to the drag the stick and pray. Cause this thing is not showing itself. Hey dog, can you go in there and find this for me? It's orange. Um, pretty devastated. Couldn't find the disc. Absolutely fumbled it. It was floating on top of the water like five feet away. That, that's, that was an all-time bad play. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be at this course later today. Maybe, uh, maybe the dirt will settle and then it'll come back to me. Maybe not, maybe that was meant to be. But uh, crazy how quick things can change. Got an even longer water carry here, so things could get morbid pretty quick. Hole 18, I, I tapped out my bogey, you sickos. I bet you wanted to see me tap out my bogey, huh? I tapped it out, I didn't film it, I was grieving. Hole 18 is a par four, 560 feet. I gotta get across and then I gotta get over. And I probably gotta deal with water twice. The most stable thing I've got left. <laughs> Thank goodness. That was pretty nice. What is that? What is that? The dust has settled. The game is back afoot. Oh my gosh. All right, it's time for redemption. Here's the crazy thing. Either this is a different orange disc or something wild happened because this thing is way further right I was sweeping left the whole time. I have no idea how it got here. I mean, I can practically reach out and touch it. This is the first sweep is everything here. The first sweep is everything. 
Got to be very careful. So careful not to stir everything up. I'm so scared. Right behind it. Pull back. Oh my gosh, I got it. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought I lost it again. <sighs> wow, that was a rush. Thank you so much again for watching uh, Trevor's Disc Golf Fishing. Uh, this one, oh, still jumping a little. <laughs> uh, this one is going on the wall for sure. See you next time. Okay, this shot is very definition of terrifying. I've got to get it around that corner, but tight so I don't go into the water on the right. Whew. Perfect for a driver. I may have gotten a little scared of that one. Might have. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I punched out. All right, final putt of the day. I don't think I've missed yet with a 13 speed, so we got to keep this going. Unbelievable. You couldn't see where that went in the frame, but it just rolled out of bounds into the water. It just kicked up and rolled. There we go. There we go. That'll do it. All right, I think we actually learned a few things today. I'm not gonna lie. This video started out as kind of like a funny sort of bit almost, but like kind of experience. It's one of those things where I was like kind of curious to see how it would go. So I just played it off like it was a bit um, as an excuse, but it, it kind of worked out. Here's what I will say. It forced me to take on difficult shots aggressively and with confidence because if you don't have confidence on those shots they're not going to work anyways so I think that there are some holes out here that would have gone differently had I tried to play safer that might be the only lesson learned out here I don't know there might be something to this 13 speeds only thing give it a try should we do a 13 speeds tournament like uh like the ace race things and the circuit challenge and all them we'll call it the um we'll call it the need for speed go fast or get last. That's what we'll call it. Um, maybe we'll run that next year. Uh, but other than that, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. I think it was a lot of fun uh, throwing these drivers. Shout out to the Hypercane, did recover it. That was a big morale boost for the video. I will see you next Monday with another upload. Always give me some suggestions in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you next week.